Following on from Landlord Basics number four, which was an introduction to serving notices, I'm joined by Tessa Shepperson again of Landlord Law, and this time for number five in Landlord Basics series, Tessa, we're actually going to talk about serving that notice on the tenant, because once yeah. you've created the notice, you then have to physically service. What does that entail? Well, the important thing to realise is that one of the most common defences that a tenant will put in to a claim for possession is... I never got the notice. So you need to be able to counter that. If the tenant claims that they never received the notice, you need to be able to say, well, actually, you did, mate, because here's the proof. So you've got to be able to prove that you've served it. Um, so you need to serve it in a way that can be proved. Now, one way that I would not recommend is just serving it through the ordinary post, because things do get lost in the post. And it's not possible for you actually to prove that it was delivered by the post office to that person's address. Now, you may have a certificate of posting, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's been delivered. The judge may accept the certificate of posting um, if, um, if the tenant doesn't challenge it. But if they do, you may be in difficulties. So there are a number of ways where you can prove receipt. The best one, of course, is if the tenant actually signs and, and dates the, um, the, a duplicate notice. So you can um, show that to the judge to prove that they've received it. If they do that, make sure they date it with the right date, because I've known situations where they've dated it with the wrong date, and then it, it's looked as if it's been served out of time. Um, the way that I often recommend, if the tenant won't do that, and often they'll refuse to do that if, if there's um, a, a, you know, a problem situation between you, is to actually go through and physically stop it through the letterbox with an independent witness. Again, okay. if you do that then um, you have got proof that you can show the judge or witness be able to do a witness statement saying that they witnessed you serving it and, and they won't be able to deny that they've received it. Well, let's um, be very clear that you shouldn't knock on the door because that could be construed as harassment if you haven't oh, given no, I don't the, think, the no, tenant... No, they, they can, it's not illegal to, to serve a, a, a notice on someone. Um, so, yes, you can do that. What, well, you can actually you know, knock on the door? song and dance about it. But um, if somebody other than the defendant answers the door, and I know this sounds ridiculous, but if somebody other than the defendant, the tenant, answers the door like a friend, you don't give it to them because you won't be able to prove that they've actually handed it on to the tenant. Evidentially, it's better if you say, well, if I can't see Mrs. Smith or whoever, I'll come back later. And then after they shut the door, put it through the letterbox. Okay. I, mean, I know that sounds ridiculous, but evidentially that, that I, I understand that that is, that is a better way to deal with it. Can you um, not do so, the? Um, sorry, can you not do the Royal Mail signed for um, service? You can do, but are they going to sign for it? I see what um, you mean. Often, okay. you know, if you're in a, a conflict situation with a tenant, they won't sign for it, and they won't go down to the post office and pick it up. Uh, so, um, okay. you know, if if they do do that, then that's brilliant because you can get, um, you know, you can go online and and, and download the um, the form with their signature. But if you're in a conflict situation, they may refuse to do that. So um, I tend to prefer the putting it through the letterbox with an independent witness. Now, if, if the property is in Carlisle and you're down in Bournemouth or something, you, you may not be able to physically get there. So the, the final recommendation that I have is to use a process server. Mm -hmm. um, and they can go around and serve it for you. They are not, because they're a professional, um, they are not going to be, their evidence is not going to be disputed by the judge. You may want to do that anyway if you're in very bad relations with your tenant because they're not going to feel antagonistic towards the process servers, they will towards you and you're not likely to get sucked into an argument with them. So that, that may be a good way to deal with it anyway. And you can find them um, through inquiry agents, um, private investigators, they normally have a department that does some process serving. In fact, it, it's a large part of their work. Fantastic. Uh, and it tends to cost between about 50 and 150 pounds for them to do it. It's not hugely expensive. Probably um, about the same as a train rail, train journey up to, from the south to the north of the country. Well, that's really fantastic advice, Tessa. So you've got two options there that te Tessa recommends, either serving the notice with an independent witness where you put the uh, envelope through the door or um, employing the services of a process server to do it professionally for you. Absolutely brilliant stuff, T Tessa. Thank you so much for joining us here and for sharing this important information for our Landlord Basics series. It's, you know, it, it's so, it's such a sort of detailed and complex area. Mm. And it, I think, you know, novice landlords do find it challenging. So I really hope you got value from this video and many thanks to Tessa.